Broker HQ. In today's video, I'm going to present to you my top four free bubble plugins that I would definitely recommend to use or that we use in most of our applications. These are all free plugins. We will make another video for premium or paid plugins. And also a disclaimer, uh, we as Anticode are one of the biggest plugin uh, publishers in the bubble ecosystem. However, today we're not gonna present any plugins developed by ourselves. So uh, first of all, what are plugins maybe? Um, plugins are a way to integrate external libraries, external code packaged into a plugin by other developers into your bubble application. So bubble obviously uh, offers a lot of native functionality, as you can see here, all of these buttons, tags, and so on. But often you'll reach a certain point where there's a certain functionality or visual element or any other information um, that you want to use. However, this functionality is then not uh, supported by Bubble itself. So this is where plugins come in handy. And you can install plugins here by clicking on the plugins tab. You can see I just have one plugin here installed. And you can click on add plugins and the search bar or a search pop-up will open where you can then install another plugin. And basically there are different kinds of plugins. There are plugins which allow you to uh, receive a new element here as, as of here, for example. So you see here Spinner, this is the plugin I installed. There are plugins which allow you to get data calls or so to get data basically. And there are plugins that allow you to have new actions here under workflows. So lots of different things. Uh, and as of now, if we click on add plugins here, I think it doesn't say here, but there are, are quite a lot of different plugins. You can see some of these plugins are used in almost half a million apps. So um, I, I believe there are not many apps where there's no plugin installed. Obviously, there's some downsides to plugins as well. First of all, uh, it bloats your app a bit because you add external libraries, you add external code. Some plugins will slow down your application much more than others. Some plugins are so small that they won't have a, a yeah effect. Uh, that's the first disadvantage and obviously the second disadvantage is you're kind of um, yeah, dependent on a plugin developer um, and um, if something stops working or you need an, an update, you'll have to reach out to the developer. So obviously some disadvantages, but again, um, our apps that are in production all probably have at least 10 plugins installed, uh, a mixture of public plugins and we use some of our own plugins or have some uh, private developed plugins. Um, so. I would always recommend to use a plugin um, if there's no other way. If you can build something natively in Bubble uh, and it's not too too crazy, um, yeah, hard, um, do it in Bubble. But otherwise, install the plugin. Um, uh, you will save lots of time and lots add lots of relevant functionality. Just don't overdo it. So uh, yeah, um, that being said, let's jump in right into my uh, list here. Again, this is my personal opinion. Um, you might agree or disagree, um, but I'm just gonna share with you what I think is quite helpful. So first of all is uh, plugin number one, <clears throat> search and autocorrect. You can see um, published already a few years ago, a lot of installs um, by No Code Co. What does it do? Well, basically it's a library that is integrated here that allows you to immediately search through the database or search through a list of things. So um, the standard bubble searching functional doesn't work at all in my opinion. So if you have like an input, for example, let's have an input uh, here and then you have a repeating group beneath this and you say the repeating group should contain only data that contains text from here. The search is slow, it's not immediate, you have to press enter and it's just not accurate. And this is where this plugin search and autocorrect comes in really handy. So let's install it right now, plugins, let's add search and autocorrect, install. And then all you, you, what you can do is simply search for this element here, you see search and autocorrect, just drag it onto the page somewhere. And then you have to define where um, you wanna, um, or what data you wanna search through. So first of all, what I have to do, I have to create a new data type. Let's just call that example. An example contains of a field called text, of type text, all right, just for demo purposes. And then we, let's add a few things. Let's add, um, I don't know, apple, uh, strawberry, and I don't know, orange. <clears throat> all right, and then, uh, you want to head over to settings, general, and you want to expose the option to add an ID attribute to HM elements. All right. Um, next, 
under data type, you want to say, okay, um, I want to search through all examples. The data source should be do a search for all examples. However, the field to search should be text. So we want to search this field and then we should match this to an input box and the input box ID, we can set that in here. So let's add an element. So I'm going to call that search input. This is just the element ID of this input box. Okay. Uh, we're going to add that uh, ID here. There's some parameters you can change. So take a look at that if you want to. Uh, and yeah, and we're good to go. So let's have here maybe enter search term. And then beneath this, we can have a repeating group, which will display the data. Okay. And this will be of type of content um, text. However, it won't be do a search for text. It will be repeating group texts, lists of text. No, that was wrong as well. Search and autocorrects matches. Let's see what the issue is. Okay. Ah, yeah, example. Now it's correct. Okay, so we're having a data source. We're having the result of this plugin. And now we can simply add the text here. The result, current cells, example, text. So just to recap, what did I do here? I have a repeating group. I have a search input bar. We can enter a search term here. This will search the bubble database, but we'll search via this plugin. And the field to search will be our text field, which is this one here, orange, strawberry, apple. And we'll re the result will be displayed in this repeating group. So let's try it and take a look at how that, how that works. And you will see the great thing is it's immediate. The search is really accurate. So let's search for orange. And you can see that's um, result number one is orange. I can even just have, you know, ORA, it still recognizes. If I just have berry, maybe you can see strawberry is the result. It's immediate, it's perfect. Uh, what else do we have? Maybe app, okay, you can see uh, apple. No result, range because of orange, strawberry. And you see exactly what I mean. And this works for much more data as well, much more um, yeah, big databases. Um, so a great way to have like a search engine or search through things in your database, much more fast, efficient, and more accurate than what the uh, native bubble functionality offers. So yeah, that's this plugin. Let's take a look at the next plugin I really like, which is also quite famous, um, which is Toolbox. So what is Toolbox? You can see um, over 300,000 in, uh, installs. And this is just basically a generalized plugin which allows you to um, yeah, um, uh, use JavaScript, which is code, in various different ways manually. Okay, so sometimes you maybe want to add some custom code or, um, or, or yeah, or you want to run some JavaScript um, or do, do some expressions, calculate something. And this is where this plugin comes in handy. So let's install that. Go to plugins and let's search for toolbox. Okay, install that and you will see, okay, we have uh, a list of a few elements. We have list of numbers, expression, JavaScript to bubble, uh, JavaScript to bubble event, uh, run JavaScript, server script. So lots of different things you can do. Um, I would recommend to take a look at the forum post or the documentation of this plugin because there's um, a lot of things you can do. But one simple example is you can just run JavaScript, any JavaScript code, either on the client side or on the server. So for example, um, if you have, let's say, um, let's, let's add, add a button maybe, <clears throat> and this button should just uh, have, uh, let's click that, start at a workflow, and then we can head over here to plugins. We wanna run some JavaScript, and I simply wanna have an alert. This is a simple JavaScript alert. Um, this plugin works. Okay, so this is simple JavaScript code. If we preview the application now um, and click the button, this code will be run by Toolbox and you can see we have the alert being shown here. So it works perfectly fine. And again, you can run all kinds of JavaScript things. What I usually like to do is um, I use this um, custom, I use custom JavaScript to open a page in a new tab because, because if I use your navigation, open an external website, it won't open a new tab. Um, and um, sometimes I don't want to use a link, so that's a use case where I use custom JavaScript. But there are lots of other use cases, and I would really recommend to just install the plugin because sooner or later there will probably be any use case or a use case that you, you will need for this plugin. All right, so let's head over to plugin number three, which is Iconify. Um, 
there's lots of different um, icon uh, plugins in the Bubble plugin store. Many of them are good. This one is my favorite um, because it allows you or gives you access to this Iconify library where very many icon sets are inside and you can simply choose from all of them. Okay, So if you go on this website, iconify.design, and you go through their available icon sets, okay, you have this like search engine here and you see there's so many plugin libraries integrated. And then if you go to Bubble, Let's just install that quickly. Iconify, install. You can simply then add an icon here, maybe um, Iconify icon like this. You can set some 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 parameters here as well. But the most important one is the name. And all all you have to do is simply go to this library and search for any icon you want. So maybe I don't know. Um, um, brain like you want a brain icon and you have all of these different options here of brain icons from all of these different libraries and all you have to do is then, then click on an icon just copy this uh, icon name here you can see what library it is from microsoft okay copy that simply paste the name here um, and then preview the application um, and you're good to go and um, uh, the icon looks amazing it's immediately integrated um, and yeah, um, a really great plugin, simple but really nice. It also allows you to uh, basically dynamically define uh, icons. So let's, for example, say you have like a page and then um, the page gets data from a database and you can have a data field for the icon, which you then enter the name from here. So the icon will be displayed dynamically, okay? And we can take a look at another example. So let's maybe do, um, I don't know, coffee. Um, choose any icon here, just copy that as well, click that, copy, and same thing. If I paste that here, we preview the application, should be immediately visible as well. Again, our, no, let's refresh again, and our coffee icon is here, so it works really, really nicely. All right, let's head over to the last plugin, which we uh, use in a lot of different um, plug uh, applications from us as well, which is the PDF Conjurer. PDF Conjurer is a plugin which allows you to generate PDFs, but the great thing is just locally. So you don't have to use any external APIs, external services. You can really build the whole PDF within your Bubble application uh, by creating basically a template and creating all of the different segments by yourself in Bubble. This is quite a uh, I would say a plugin with a bit of a learning curve and it's not super easy, but once you get the hang of it, it's really powerful. Um, let's, so let's search for a PDF conjurer. Um, and I won't go through everything, but you can see there's lots of actions here because it allows you to really define every single piece of the structure of the PDF, like um, start, like create columns, create tables, create a footer, add a repeating group, and so on and so forth. And at the end, you can use the Conjure PDF model to basically create the PDF, download it, save it, um, and um, yeah, basically create PDFs in your Bubble application without being um, yeah, dependent on any other um, parties or any other services. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. These are my uh, four, um, yeah, or well, one of my four favorite plugins, which are free, um, which, um, yeah, we basically use in almost all of our applications. Um, there are, are a few other really great free plugins. Maybe we're going to do a part two of this video. Um, and we're also going to do a part uh, one for the premium plugins, which are all, there are also quite a few great plugins in the Bubble plugin store. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And we're going to see you guys for next tutorial with NoCoHQ. Bye.